assumed command today. Bless him as he seeks to be an inspiration to the sailors of the boat. Strengthen Commander Grover. Encourage him and empower him to command as you would have him command. Finally, Lord, we ask that you will be with all of us today, that this ceremony will not just be another event on our calendar, but a benchmark of excellence for us all to follow as we seek that to be all that you have called us to be and all that our country needs us to be. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Alabama Blue Change Command Ceremony. Mayor Justin Grover is relieving Captain Larry Arbo today. The Change of Command Ceremony is rich in naval heritage, including traditions such as the sideboys, bells, piping of war, uh, members of the official party. Today, we acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests and visitors. Admiral Til Tilbrook, fellow waterfront triads, and special guests of and friends and family of Captain Arbuckle and Commander Grover. Bosun, post the sideboys. Attention. Guests, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing until the completion of the invocation. Commander, United States Navy, arriving. United States Navy, arriving. the colors.
seven weeks for the delivery of the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we begin this ceremony by recognizing your presence in the course of our lives that has begun by your gracious hand. Even as we navigate the seas of earth, we hear your voice calling us to serve as sailors and submariners, as true warriors of the deep who stand firm in the face of adversity, a final bulwark over and against so much darkness to even stand against the evil that threatens our existence. This is the call that has been answered by USS Alabama. Let our eternal love and gratitude for Captain Larry J. Arbuckle be evident, and may he take that gift with him as he sails over this horizon to new waters of great adventure. And in the midst of that rough work, you have called another to lead, and so the mantle of leadership as commanding officer USS Alabama passes from Captain Arbuckle to Commander Justin R. Grover. As it does with the support of family and new friends, we ask your continued grace upon the lives of both men. We pray that in difficult times, you would fill them with strength and guidance. Teach those in command to lead, just as you teach those under their command to follow. The demands for Commander Grover will be no less, so we do ask for the grace, the wisdom, and the strength necessary for this mission. Allow him to continue to be a man of honor that inspires sailors as well to meet their mission with excellence. In your holy name we pray, amen. Yes, please be seated. Alabama, seats. Bozeman, sorry to sign boys. U.S. Navy regulations, the authority of the commanding officer is absolute and commensurate with his responsibility. While they may, at their discretion, and when not contrary to law and regulation, delegate authority to subordinates for the execution of details, such delegation of authority shall in no way relieve the commanding officer to continue responsibility for the safety, well-being, and efficiency of the entire command. Today's guest speaker is Captain Murray. He served as a division officer on board USS Wyoming, weapons officer on USS Georgia, executive officer on USS Tennessee, and as commanding officer on USS Wyoming. He is currently serves as the director of maritime operations for Commander Task Group 114.3. Please welcome Captain Merritt. Thanks, XO. Good afternoon and welcome, Admiral Tilbrook, distinguished guests, family and friends of Captain Marbuckle and Commander Grover, our local submarine family, and the incredible crew of USS Alabama Blue. It's my absolute honor to be here today and to participate in the changing of command for one of our nation's most critical assets, a ballistic missile submarine. For those that know me, it should come as no surprise that today I'm gonna to talk about the significance of our mission, the SSBN itself, and most importantly, the crews. When I was at STRATCOM, the Army and the Air Force constantly wanted to talk about their equipment, how cool their tanks were, how neat their stealth bombers were. They're okay, I guess, but uh, for me, the rest of the Joint Force didn't really get SSBNs. They didn't understand just how cool this piece of equipment is. So I had to find a way to put it into perspective for them, and I found a way to paint a visual that seemed uh, that even the Army and the Air Force could understand. So here's how it goes. Your submarine at 560 feet long is nearly two football fields long. The missiles each weigh the same as an Abrams tank. So now picture those 24 tanks stood up down the length of two football fields, and that's what our sailors operate submerged and undetected all over the world every day. The modern SSBN is an engineering marvel made up of complex and interconnected systems employing nearly every engineering discipline in its design. But despite all of that design and technology, the only thing an Ohio-class submarine can do on its own is sit at the pier and rust. 
To do every other thing that it's meant to do, it needs a highly trained crew, it needs exceptional leadership to be able to go to sea and act as that ever-present strategic deterrence for the United States, our partners, and allies. And that's why we're really here today. I've had the pleasure of knowing Captain Larry Arbuckle and working with him over the past several years. I spent extensive time with him during the prospective commanding officer pipeline and uh, some lonely nights for me at Naval Reactors while he was much smarter as a served engineer. It was during that time in the pipeline, though, that I got to know him well. Some stories about cigar nights in D.C. that I won't bring up here. And uh, what I can tell you is that Larry is the exact kind of guy you want on your team. His exacting standards, exceptional technical expertise, and incredible capability as an officer only surpassed by the fact that he's just a great person. What I learned from Larry as I worked next to him during the pipeline was you have to be confident in what you're good at. And at the same time, completely willing to acknowledge the things you're not and go after those and work on them hard. I had plenty of areas to work on to be a great submariner and he didn't miss any opportunities to point those out to me and I really appreciated that. But at the same time, he was right there to help me, right there to make sure that I could get better every day and I'm confident that my time with him is the same thing that the crew of Alabama Blue saw, always willing to get in the ring with you, always willing to make you better. So Larry, thank you for the advice and the mentorship that you provided me and I'm sure your crew as well. I wanted to give you a couple cigars as a small token of my gratitude and a reminder of some uh, interesting nights and downtime during the pipeline. I also wanted to congratulate and say thank you to your family, Ashley, Madison, Parker, Grayson, and Hadley. Your service and sacrifice during this time and through your whole time in the Navy is greatly appreciated. We give a round of applause to the family, please. As I said a few moments ago, the success of the SSBN force is not based on the submarine itself. It's based on the drive and expertise of our sailors that take those boats to sea. With that in mind, I wanted to take a moment and thank the crew of Alabama Blue and remind you and our guests of what it is that you do for our nation every day. It's no secret that the strategic deterrence mission is the number one mission of the Department of Defense. The primary mission of Alabama and her crew is to deter existential threats to the United States of America. That mission is the foundation of every other military mission across the globe. And further, it enables assurance and extended deterrence that we provide our partners and allies. So here's my take on the mission that the crew of Alabama Blue executes for us day in and day out. As SSBN sailors, each time we commence our operations, we once again grasp the torch of freedom and carry it silently into the dark. We're tasked to perform a mission it's frankly impossible to really wrap your mind around. In most military specialties, they're tasked to train, rehearse in peacetime, and be ready to execute if they're ever needed in war. For us, it's different. For us, the mission exists every day. For us, the peacetime mission of strategic deterrence is the primary mission, and we use our ballistic missile submarines and our amazing crews to do it every day. Failure to execute our primary mission of strategic deterrence puts the lives of everyone in the United States at risk. Our mission, quite literally, is to be so feared and respected that any potential adversary chooses not to escalate to nuclear war because they know that they can't win. Our mission doesn't wait until they decide to fight. Our mission doesn't start when nuclear weapons are headed towards our family. Our mission is right here and right now. And if we do it right, then we return home from each patrol knowing that it's because of us that our families, our friends, and our countrymen live in peace every day. The mission matters more than I can express in words, and the consequences of failed strategic deterrence would change the world forever. Each time you get underway, please recognize that what you do matters, and it matters on a level that is so profound that most of the world just takes it for granted. Peace is our profession. And I thank you for the sacrifices that you and your families make every day to provide that peace for our world. Commander Grover, as you take command of Alabama Blue, never forget that it's the sailors and not the submarine that make our nation great. You and Nina have gone through a lot to get here today, but it's not the finish line. It's just the start of an incredible opportunity 
So remember to lead this crew and their families with passion, intensity, and humility. These, sir, these sailors definitely deserve it. As you walk out of here today, I hope that your head is held a little higher, knowing that you and the crew of Alabama Blue are what make our SSBNs credible, reliable, and survivable. Congratulations, Captain Marbuckle, Commander Grover. I wish you all the best. Congratulations, the crew of Alabama Blue. Hey, thank you, XO. Thank you, Captain Murray. <clears throat> it was an honor having you speak here today, uh, uh, Captain Murray. I can tell you that uh, you have been an inspiration to me since the moment that we met, uh, and uh, I've used you as a role model throughout both of my command tours now. And thank you for speaking here today. Admiral, shipmates, friends, family, fellow commanding officers, again, thank you for being here today. I'd also like to thank the uh, men and women of the many organizations that enable our Pacific Fleet SSB in force and specifically have worked so hard to make my patrol with USS Alabama so successful. The Trident Training Facility always provides uh, meets and responds to the needs of the fleet and provides high quality, high fidelity training to the operational force. Trident refil Refit Facility Bangor took amazing steps to ensure our ship was ready for sea and when material, material issues developed while underway sent an expert to meet, uh, to meet us at sea and uh, keep Alabama underway while providing quality training to, uh, to our sailors. Strategic Weapons Facility Pacific, Naval Base Kitsap, and Submarine Readiness Squadron 3-1 provide outstanding support to the warfighter. I'd like to express my gratitude to the staffs of Submarine Squadron 17, Submarine Group 9, and Commander Task Force 114.3 for uh, support in getting Alabama to sea and supporting our underway operations. Uh, more than any other, submarining is a team sport, and Team Banger exemplifies this fact in doing the work to defend our nation. I'd also like to uh, thank our command ombudsman, Mrs. Molly Strong, for, uh, for being here today and for the uh, incredible hard work that you put in uh, to supporting the families of the USS Alabama sailors. Thank you for that, Molly. Um, foremost, I could not have been successful aboard Alabama without the support of my loving family. Ashley, I've asked so much of you. Uh, I have spent years of our mar marriage sailing the high seas and working long hours when ashore. Uh, you have always been amazing at not just keeping the family on track in my absence, but in always running the show with such grace. Uh, always while going above and beyond to support the families of our sailors. I gave you no warning that this command tour was coming, but you jumped in with unbelievable energy and just did the work that you always do. Thank you for standing beside me all these years, providing the support that I never deserved. Madison, I'm so happy that uh, you could be here today. I thank you for tolerating all the, uh, the many times I could not be there for you over the years and for helping mom to get through all the challenges that, uh, that you guys face together. Uh, I am so proud of the woman that you are and are continuing to grow into. I would also like to recognize the irony of the, uh, the many times that I would send you a, a picture of this particular warship uh, with uh, our uh, iconic, if not official, slogan uh, and I know that uh, your emotional response was driven by deep-seated competition, uh, but uh, uh, I do thank you for the grace at which you joined the, uh, the Bama family uh, and its own. Uh, but with that, I will give you now a hotty toddy. <laughs> Parker, Grayson, Hadley, thank you for taking time away from school to be here today. I know that was uh, pretty hard for you. Uh, <clears throat> and thank you for willingly giving up our time together so that I could accomplish this, uh, this tour. Barker, your drive amazes me. Uh, I love the energy you bring to everything that you do and uh, your love of all things Navy. Uh, while I'm sure that you would prefer that this would be an aviation squadron that I was uh, addressing here today, uh, nonetheless, I appreciate the support that you, uh, you provide to the submarine force. And I have no doubt that you'll be standing in the spot soon enough if you continue to want to serve in the U.S. Navy. Grayson, you're such a kind-hearted, loving person. I'm inspired by your drive to always do the right thing, help others when you can, and I love our time building things together. Hadley, uh, I have no idea where you get all of your energy from, uh, but I am so pressed, impressed by your drive. Uh, I have loved watching you blossom into an amazing, self-sufficient young lady, always putting your whole heart into everything you do. Thank you, guys. For the crew of the Alabama, we began this journey together in uh, less than ideal conditions, but you rose to every challenge presented to you. Your dedication to the mission and drive to improve our warfighting readiness 
made this tour incredibly personally rewarding. You fought through many material issues uh, to get our ship to sea and then keep her there. Every department faced these challenges and every one was met with steadfast resolve to remain on our nation's watch bill with technical rigor and warfighting tenacity. During our time together, you completed a first ever logistics demonstration, multiple open ocean transfers and straight transits, tactical development exercises to strengthen the whole of Navy readiness, and executed a rigorous training plan to ensure that Alabama is ready to fight tonight and on her coming patrols. You also rapidly responded to casualty situations with professionalism and dedication, many that we inserted for training and many that uh, Bama inserted uh, all on her own. I am humbled to have served with such a professional and tenacious group of American sailors. I will cherish the memories we built together aboard our deployed warship. Because of each and every one of you, I will forever be proud to say that I was a part of the Alabama family. Justin, I know the next few years are going to be exceptionally re rewarding for both you and Nina. Uh, you are going to lead this ship and crew into her finest days, and I'm sure of that. Uh, and I just want to say I stand by what I said a, a couple of weeks ago. I think you're the luckiest man on earth. And I'm just a bit jealous. All right. With that, uh, Alabama, I'll leave you with uh, one final statement as your commanding officer. Go Bama! Roll Tide! I will now read my orders. Alabama, on to Agent. From... Commander, Submarine Squadron 17, when directed, detach from USS Alabama and report to the Commander, Submarine Squadron 17. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Justin Grover, respected commanding officer, USS Alabama Blue. I shall now read my orders from Commander Navy Personnel Command to Commander Justin Grover, Bupers Order 2722, when directed by reporting senior, detach from OpNav, Washington, D.C., and report to Alabama Blue, commanding officer, as his relief. Thanks, XO. Can you guys hear me in the back? All right. Uh, good afternoon, Admiral, Commodore, uh, distinguished guests, family, friends, shipmates, airmate, uh, uh, and everybody else who was able to make it today, especially uh, families and crew of the Alabama Blue. So 20 years ago uh, this summer, as a much, much younger midshipman, I had my first exposure to the fleet uh, during a summer training cruise block. And during that train, training cruise block is when I first got underway on a submarine. Uh, and that submarine happened to be the USS Alabama. Compared to some of my experiences earlier that summer, I was truly taken aback by the awesome nature and power of that vessel, which is capable of carrying at the time 24 three-stage rockets, delivered nuclear weapons across the globe, uh, powered by a nuclear reactor, capable of submerging and operating unseen and unheard for an extended period of time. But most significantly, I was truly impressed with the professionalism, technical competence, camaraderie, and pride demonstrated by her crew. So looking back, that uh, young midshipman who got his picture taken with a Polaroid uh, posing at the periscope would have never imagined that he be here on the stage uh, taking command of that very same warship. So I'm sincerely humbled that the Navy has provided me this honor to serve you as commanding officer, lead this extraordinary team as we continue to execute one of our nation's highest priorities, integrated deterrence, by providing the president with a reliable and survivable strategic deterrent platform. While Alabama's been silently conducting her mission nearly for 40 decades, or correction, four decades, 
she is no less lethal today than the day that she was put to sea. And I'd argue that her lethality is only increased because of you, the true professionals that man her watch. So to my shipmates, airmate here today, to include my first commanding officer, Captain Jim Duty, thank you for your personal leadership, mentorship, and patience. Uh, to my family, thank you for your unending support and unconditional love. To my wife, Nina, thank you for being eternally by my side since day one of this adventure uh, with ever enduring challenges, challenges, challenging assignments, demanding schedules, 13 Navy moves back and forth across the country, and doing all this with a positive attitude and your own personal sacrifice. To Captain Marbuckle, my sincere thanks for jumping uh, into this assignment and truly going all in under challenging circumstances, committing to lead this amazing crew on a very successful trajectory. Uh, I wish you enjoy your well-deserved <laughs> night off uh, before reporting uh, to your uh, job as Deputy Commodore. Uh, to Ashley and the kids, thanks for unexpectedly giving up your husband and dad uh, to fulfill, to answer this call of duty um, and for integrating yourselves into the Alabama family uh, during that time. And finally, to the family's crew of Alabama Blue, I commit to give everything that I have to bring us closer together as a team of highly capable warfighters and to continue building upon the successes demonstrated in the last patrol. As I mentioned earlier, this is truly, truly honor of my lifetime to be assigned as your commanding officer. So excited to serve you over the next cap, or as a captain over the next few years. Go Bama! Roll time. Let us pray. Almighty Father, in every generation you have raised up from the children of men protectors of the innocent, true warriors with righteous hearts and keen minds, defenders of freedom. You train their hands for war and their fingers for battle, that darkness not consume the earth. As they take on their new duties and responsibilities, we ask for continued blessings upon Captain Larry J. Arbuckle and Commander Justin R. Grover. We thank you for the faithful service rendered by Captain Arbuckle during his time in command. Thank you for all that he has done for the USS Alabama and for the United States Navy. As they shift their focus and energies to other things, we pray that you will continue to bless him and his family in the days ahead. We know, though, that Commander Grover's commitment to the Navy and to the United States of America will not change, and we thank you for this as well. We also ask that you will be with Commander Grover as he assumed command today. Bless him as he seeks to be an inspiration to the sailors of the boat. Strengthen Commander Grover, encourage him, and empower him to command as you would have him command. Finally, Lord, we ask that you will be with all of us today, that this ceremony will not just be another event on our calendar, but a benchmark of excellence for us all to follow as we seek that to be all that you have called us to be and all that our country needs us to be. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Captain, 
Alabama. 